Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of Fandom Fights. We're here for a singles title match. Uh, and uh, I am your host, Tim Burkala. I am not joined by Nick Tuig today. I am joined by the former singles and former teams champion, Thomas Scully. Thomas, haven't seen you in a while. How the hell are you, my friend? I am doing all right, Tim. I've been away from the game for about nine months now, so my detox is almost complete. Nice. Uh, it's nice to be back for a singles title match. It brings back so many pleasant memories I thought I'd forgotten about. Um, but you know what? I think Opel and Tyler – and look, well, what I love about what the game has shown us this year, almost every one of the top competitors has played in this kind of scenario. So and Opel and Tyler are just the, the next two in line to get this kind of shot. I like this sort of revolving door of guys we have coming in, um, playing for that for, for the highest honor in fandom. Um, these guys have improved so much than when I last saw them play. Um, so I'm really excited to see what, what kind of match we get today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right now we're like you said, we're looking at Abel and Tyler Abel winning his belt at mayhem at the multiplex, um, a couple months ago against, uh, Brittany, um, which was an insane match went down to the wire in sudden death Abel winning on a sudden death question absolutely insane and then um tyler the i'm just double checking yes the current <laughs> team's champion that match airs tomorrow where he'll be uh looking to defend his team's belt with britney uh it, it, britney's teammate uh now trying to get revenge for britney against Abel and Tyler had some really good wins uh, to get him here. Knocked out Jack Pinchuk, one against Kaiser, who's been playing extremely well as well. And, but Abel's just been on a tear, man, like won the tournament, won the belt and maybe the couple months off uh, show some rust, but I, I doubt it. The dude's just been on fire and so is Tyler. So this is going to be really awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Let's get into it. Starting with the promos. Win or lose, you're still a champion. And you'll be less of an ass than Abel. Let's play. Hi. Well, I have something that I'd like to say to Tyler. Yes, I'll clear the floor for you, please. All right. Well, Tyler, sometimes when you're staring at the blank page before you, just, you know, open up the dirty window and let the sun illuminate the words that you could not find. Because when you're reaching for something in the distance, you know, so close that you can almost taste it, just... That's when you release your inhibitions so you can feel the rain on your skin, you know, because no one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. Okay. No one, I'm saying no one else can speak the words on your lips. So drench yourself in words unspoken, live your life with arms wide open because Tyler today is where your book begins. The rest is still unwritten. Do it. Scully thoughts on the promos. Well, I missed a good Cody promo as much as the next guy. Um, but it's interesting seeing him being the, 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 the less aggressive type in the promos now. Uh, respect to, to Abel, he this certainly has the, the confidence it takes to be a champion. Uh, but Tyler looks like he's got some to prove today. So uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see what happens. Yep, let's get into it. Starting with round number one, here's how it's going to work. There are going to be 10 questions from 10 random categories in the realm of fandom fights. Each question is worth one point a piece. If you get all 10 questions correct, you'll be issued a bonus question to you, only to you. You have uh, four repeats, as this is a title match, so four repeats and one challenge for the match. Abel and Tyler, do you have any questions as we get into round number one? No, but I love the sales. The what? Time. Oh, the snails. Yeah. Uh, awesome. All right. Well, then let's kick it off with question number one. Scully, would you go ahead and read that question? I would be delighted to. Gentlemen, your first question of the match is in the category of YA. In the Hunger Games, Mocking J Part 1, during his first broadcast with Caesar, what does PETA ask the audience for that gets him branded a traitor? Um, were you branded a traitor when you left? Um fandom fights um a traitor to my own competitive edge absolutely to my mental health i was welcomed back with open arms i i hear you there buddy i hear you there five four some would say with arms wide open. i'll repeat the question oh. uh i saw abel do the repeat first so uh go ahead Scully. Right, first repeat in the hunger games mocking jay part one during his first broadcast with caesar what does PETA ask the audience for that gets him branded a traitor 
Yeah, I remember like the first like month after I said I was going to stop playing and I was like, this is so weird. I can't do this. I miss the game. And then I watched like a not fandom film and I was like, my God, this is incredible. Five, four, three. My Netflix watch list was one, teeny. Ten, stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's start with Tyler on this one. I said a ceasefire. And Abel. Yeah, it's a lay down their weapons. Yeah, we can accept both of those amp- answers. Lay down their weapons, a ceasefire. Uh, so one to one, your next question is in the category of Pixar. Which Pixar film features someone getting distracted from their job by what they believe is a karate demonstration? Karate, am I right? I never took karate. Me either. Um, I do know that as a young lad, one uh, Spider Parker uh, has had a black belt or something, but... I think if you asked him to do that now, he might vomit. Five, four, three, two, one. That's down. We'll go to Apple. Uh, I said Apple. And Tyler. No, I didn't even. Nope. Uh, Cars 2 is the answer. Cars 2. Everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite. I had the same look on your guys' face when Nick tested that question on me. Uh, so your next question is in the category of sci-fi icons, and Scully's going to give it to you. Absolutely. Good question, gentlemen. Uh, who plays Upworth, the female communications officer who was killed by an alien in the shower in Alien Covenant? Rough way to go. Not the even, is, not even I mean, the alien part. The shower part. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the shower is 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 your domain. Like that's where you relax. That's where you relax. Like, it's like if you got killed on the toilet. Just like, not not a great time to go. Five, four. Two. I'll repeat it again. Okay, that's going to be the second repeat for Abel. All right. Who plays Upworth, the female communications officer who was killed by an alien in the shower in Alien Covenant? Are you saying Up? Oh. Are you saying Upworth? Yes. Okay. UP. Hello. UP. Well, if you die in the toilet, it solves the issue of the voiding of the bowels when you die. That's true. That's so, true. Two birds, one stone. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Tyler. I can't remember. I said Mackenzie Davis. And Abel. Yeah. Um, your audio is a little hit or miss for me, but I said Callie Hernandez. Uh, Callie Hernandez is correct. All right, your next question is going to come in the category of the Wizarding World. Which Hogwarts student does Kingsley order to tell McGonagall that they may need one or two more wands on his side of the castle in Deathly Hallows Part 2? I would go for one wand. I could go for two. Nice. Nice. Imagine that, just a wizard just like running around with like two wands. I don't think that's ever happened, but that that would be dope. If that ever happened in in a Wizarding World film, it would automatically become my favorite Wizarding World film. All right. Well, if it happens in the next uh, Beasts movie, five. That's never getting made? Yeah, sure. (laughs) Two, one, pens down. Let's go to Abel. Hoff, Shot in the Dark, Dean Thomas. And Tyler. Luna Lovegood. Dean is correct. Wow. So Abel goes up three to one. What's next, Scully? And what's next is scores and soundtracks. Good question. What is the name of the song that Anna and Elsa's mother sings them to sleep with in Frozen 2? A damn classic. Personal favorite of in the Bracala household. Yeah, we love this film in the Bracala household. Great film. The, it's, it's it's the last Jedi of, of Disney animated films. Is that a comparison that's been made? <laughs> I mean, it feels like that with how polarized it is. One well, pens down. That's fair. Uh, let's go to Tyler. I don't know. I said Arendelle's lullaby. Uh, and Abel. I said all is found. All is found is the correct answer. All right, guys. Your next question is in the category of Middle Earth. 
Which Middle Earth film features human heads being flung flung over castle gates? I feel like at some point, at some point, someone's gonna do that in a fandom promo. Be like, "Hey, man, it's you and me." And then he starts flinging like teddy bear heads. Oh no! Oh no! Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Abel. So, Return of the King and Tyler. I said the two towers. Return of the King is correct. So Abel leads five to one. What's next, Scully? All right. What's next is. Worlds of DC. Name both worlds of DC heroes who have died and been resurrected. Ah, the worlds of DC. Probably shouldn't talk about it because then could give stuff away. So instead I'll say, ah, tuna fish. About as about as bad as the worlds of DC. Yeah, it depends. Five. Not a big tuna guy. Three, two, one. Pens down. I like it grilled. Uh, let's go to uh, Tyler. Superman and Shazam. And Abel. No, Superman and Aquaman. You're right. Superman and Shazam is correct. So Tyler cuts into that lead a little bit. It's five to two. Your next question is in the category of DC, regular DC. Who voices Lex Luthor in DC League of Super Pets? This is the one where the pets are super, Thomas. It's fine. Yeah, I enjoy it for the fact that, like, I was expecting, like, no pun intended dog shit and then ended up, like, finding some of it actually pretty humorous. But I, 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 did, I did hate the post credit scene, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very stupid. Five, four, three, two, Jeez. one. Pens down. Let's go to Abel. Mark Maron. And Tyler. Yeah, Mark Marin. Mark Marin is correct. Six right. to three. What is next? All righty. Your next question. In Planet of the Apes, what is the name of the puzzle that Bright Eyes is able to complete after being given ALZ 112 at the beginning of Rise of the Planet of the Apes? I would take this just for the uh, cool eye colors. Pretty sure it only happens to you know that one character, but it'd be pretty cool. That was a dumb joke. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm lost without Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no, who am I kidding? I would have said that dumb joke if whether Nick was here or not. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to uh, Tyler. I said the Lucas Tower. And Abel. I said the Hasline Tower. Lucas Tower is correct. So Tyler cutting in a little bit more to that lead, six to four, as we get to your final question of the round, which is in the category of fandom quotes. And your question is, which phase four MCU character said the quote, I can't beat you, so I'll give you what you want. Me when I see the cookout drive through at three o'clock in the morning. Ooh, there you go. There you go. That was a good one, Thomas. That was good. Oh, see, we're missing that Thomas Scully energy <laughs> over here. Oh, my God. <laughs> Five, four. She just can't three, stay away. <laughs> one. Pens down. We're going to go to Abel. I said Ant-Man. And Tyler. Spider-Man. Both incorrect. We were looking for America Chavez. Oh, okay. Uh, Dr. Strange, the multiverse of madness. So no perfect rounds. So no bonus question, but we end round, uh, number one. It's a two point game. Abel in the lead with six to Tyler's four. Abel has two repeats remaining. Tyler has all four and both challenges are intact. So we're going to move into round number two. It is the wheel round. We're going to bring up the wheel from wheeldecide.com. Each player is going to have a chance to spin the wheel. If they like what they spin the first time, they can keep it. Or they can choose to spin again, but they have to keep what they spin the second time. Each question is going to be worth two points apiece. Unless you want to check the multiple choice, then it will be worth only one point and stealing is available in this round. So be on the lookout. Uh, the categories on the wheel today are worlds of DC, star Wars, DC, American spies, James Bond, star Trek, 
fandom quotes, Disney animation, and spinners and opponents choice are on the wheel at the request of the champion. So, Abel, you are in the lead. Would you like to spin first or defer to Tyler? I think we go second here. That sounds good. Yes, sir. All right, so we will bring in Mr. Newberry. Here. We will spin the wheel for Mr. Birch. Good luck, buddy. It lands on Star Trek. How are we feeling? I mean, I think we, I think we got to. Yeah, I think so. See what happens, but yeah, I don't. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna play that game. We're we're gonna keep Star Trek. Yeah. Keep it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, all right. Use your repeats. Scully, would you please give Tyler his questions in Star Trek? Absolutely. All right, Tyler, your first question in Star Trek. Are you ready? Yep. First question. Which Star Trek film features a yellow alert being activated while in space dock? I got multiple. Okay. Your options are A, The Wrath of Khan, B, The Search for Spock, C, The Voyage Home, or D, The Undiscovered Country. Five, four, three, two, one. Wrath of Khan. That is incorrect. Chance for one point steal for Abel. Uh, options are A, the Wrath of Khan, B, the Search for Spock, C, the Voyage Home, or D, Undiscovered Country. Um, yellow Alert in Space Dock. Um, uh, <clears throat> undiscovered Country. That is also incorrect. The answer was the Search for Spock. Fair enough. One where they search for Spock. That's, that's very true. All righty, Tyler, your second question. Who plays Captain John Harriman, the new captain of the Enterprise at the beginning of Star Trek Generations? Alan Ruck. That is correct for two points. Tie game. All right, your third question. In Star Trek Insurrection, the first time a need shows that she can stop the perfect moment in time the two witness what specific type of animal moving in slow motion. Uh, could I potentially get a repeat? Because that got real weird with me. Yeah, there, there was, there was a, some feedback. So go ahead. I was worried that was just me again. Okay. Right. Go ahead, Scully. Okay. In Star Trek Insurrection, the first time Anij shows Picard that she can stop the perfect moment in time, the two witness what specific type of animal moving in slow motion. I'm going to go multiple. Okay. Your options are A, Bumblebee, B, Squirrel, C, Hummingbird, or D, Fox. Hummingbird? That is correct for one point. So take the lead. Good stuff. All right, your fourth question. What does Spock Prime use to scare off the creature that was chasing Kirk on Delta Vega in Star Trek 09? I'm going to go multiple again. Okay. Your options are A, a torch, B, a hologram, C, an axe, or D, a ship engine. A torch. That is correct for another point. And your last question in Star Trek. What planet does Scotty find the USS Vengeance behind in Star Trek Into Darkness? Oh. Jupiter. That is correct for another two points. So at the end of Tyler's round, he got six, bringing his total up to 10. Obel still at six. 
Yep, that is what I have as well. So we will bring back in Mr. Meltzer and the wheel, and this is going to be the spin for Bobble. Wait up. It lands on DC. I think we can do better. Yeah. So I suggest we spin again. There's nothing on here that's like super terrible anyway for you. Let's just try. So spin again? Yes, yes please. Spin again. Okay. This is going to be what you're stuck with, Abel. And it lands on James Bond. All right. Cool. You got this champ. You're in good position. Thank you. All right, Abel, I will be giving you your questions in the category of James Bond. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, your first question. Which James Bond film features the main villain setting Bond loose in the jungle in order to be purposely hunted? I mean, yeah, Octopussy. That is correct for two points. That deserves a sip of beer. Your next question. Who plays Pam Bouvier? Bou 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 Who plays Pam Bouvier Bou in License to Kill? Thank you. <laughs> French names, always tricky. Yeah. <laughs> Words are just tricky. <laughs> Carrie Lowell. Lowell. That is correct for two people. Cool. Sometimes you just never heard a name. You've, yeah. only it. <laughs> You've only read it. I totally get it. All right, your next question. What is the full name of the man Bond calls C in Spectre? <sighs> I'll go to multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, Gareth Mallory, B, Tiago Rodrigo, C, Max Denby, or D, David Ellsworth. C, Max Denby. That is correct for one point and the lead. Wait, you made the you made the multiple choice C for C? <laughs> yeah, well, hey, hey. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Uh, all right. Your next question, Abel. Mm -hmm. In A View to a Kill, Zorin plans of destroying a part of California so that he can have a monopoly on manufacturing what specific kind of objects? Three, multiple choice, please. All right. Your options are A, computers, B, microchips, mm -hmm. C, helicopters, or D, car engines. Okay. I couldn't find the right wording for it, but yeah, microchips. That is correct for one point. Yeah. And Abel, you had comp computer chips in my head. <laughs> your final question, Abel. Yes, sir. James Bond. What is the name of the group of women under Blofeld's control in On Her Majesty's Secret Service? Hmm. The Angels of Death? That is correct for two points. All right, Scully. So at the end of Abel's turn, I have him getting his total up to 14 to Tyler's 10. That is what I have as well. All right. So it's a four point game. We're going to get into round number three. It is the filmography round. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, we are going to give uh, three questions to each player, uh, a one pointer, a two pointer and a three pointer. Each question will give two clues pointing to an actor or actress in a fandom film. And they will have to tell us who that person is uh, for the one two and three pointer. So uh, Abel, you still have two repeats remaining. Tyler, you still have all four. Do you guys have any questions? Nope. No, I'm having fun. Tyler, are you having fun? 
having a blast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Avil, you're in the lead. So do you want uh, your questions from set one or set two? Uh, I'll take set one. Okay. Uh, so, Tyler, I will give you your questions then in set two. We'll start with you since you're down. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Your first question in set two of the filmography round. Who voices a DreamWorks snail and plays a Marvel mercenary? Ryan Reynolds. That is correct for one point. All right. Your two-pointer, Tyler. Who plays a Star Trek admiral and a sci-fi icon? Peter Weller. Mm -hmm. That is correct for two points. And your three-point question, Tyler. Who plays an MCU former spy and a Star Wars former mentor? Repeat. All right. That is going to be your first repeat, Tyler. Who plays an MCU former spy and a Star Wars former mentor? Four, three, two. One more repeat. All right. That is your second repeat. Who plays an MCU former spy and a Star Wars former mentor? Four, three, two. Uh, I'm just going to say Samuel L. Jackson. That is incorrect. We were looking for uh, Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Oh, Cody is looking to be brought in. Um, just want to talk to Tyler before we think about it. Samuel L. Jackson kind of would count to that criteria, right? I mean, I would think so. He's a, he hung it up as same as a. What's his face? As wow. a spy. As a spy. Um, and then also and then he, be a mentor in the Jedi Council? Yeah, you would think so. I mean, I think it's loosely, but I think on those criteria, like, I don't know if we'd have to challenge. I don't know if it's... I know we're grasping at straws, but it's three points. You want to... Do you think we'll need it any other time? Because, like, he's, he's now the head of it, but he was a spy inside the MCU, correct? Or am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, wrong. he hung it up as being head of S.H.I.E.L.D. at the end of Winter Soldier, so you would think that would mean that he's now a former spy. Um, yeah. yeah well, we're going to challenge. Yeah, we're going to challenge. It. All right. We'll be right back after this challenge. All right, we're back from the challenge. Um scully nick and i talked about it and we decided that samuel l jackson does fit the criteria of the um uh clues that were given um and so precedent states then that we give tyler the three points so tyler will get those three points and i have him then at 16 is that what you have scully yep that is correct and abel's at 14 yes yep okay so abel we're gonna move over to your questions now uh scully would you please read abel his first uh filmography question absolutely abel are you ready somebody yes let's go all right here here's one pointer who plays a law and order police officer and a disney animated dragon eddie murphy that is correct for one point 
All right, here's your two. Who plays a Star Wars general and a DC district attorney? Four, three, two, one. Donald Gleason. That's incorrect. It's Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams. Oh, all right. All right. So we go to your three pointer. Who plays an American spy's military captain and voices a Pixar killer? Pixar killer. Pixar killers. Four, three, two, one. Willem Dafoe. Uh, that is incorrect. Yeah. It's Benjamin Bratt. Benjamin Bratt. So Abel only gets the one point. So Tyler leads 16 to 15 going into round four. That is what I have as well. All right. So uh, we are going to get into round number four. It is the deep cut round. Here's how this is going to work. Uh, the players each drafted four categories and four movies for those categories uh, to put on the deep cut wheel. I'm going to bring in the wheel and uh, we are going to spin the wheel five times to get five different questions um, from the wheel. Could be from the same. All five questions could be from the same movie. Could be one from different movies. Who knows? The wheel does what the wheel does. Uh, each player has two repeats remaining, and both challenges are still intact. Any questions from the players? Nope. I'm good. Okay, so the uh, movies on the wheel for the deep cut are The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey, The Bad Guys, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, The Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2, Cars 3, Lethal Weapon 3, Captain America the Winter Soldier, and 2007's Halloween. So, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so we will kick it off with the first spin. I watched six of these today. Oh, my Lord. Uh, so the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, part two, is going to be your first question. Gentlemen, are you ready? Yep. All right, your first question. Edward tells Bella that before she is allowed to see Renezme, she needs to do what specifically? Scully, I think you know this because you've hosted these matches before, but obviously when you read the next question, whatever movie it is, read question two from them. And yeah, you get it. I just I need mean, to say it. I've been in like 10 of these. Yeah. Not on the hosting side. Only like one. Not on the hosting side. But I've been, I think I've hosted a few of these before. You have. Three, two, one. Pens down. Pens down, Abel. Let's go to Abel. Said, um, quench her thirst slash and then hunt and and uh tyler yeah get her thirst under control yes we can accept both of those answers and i forgot to mention before each question is worth two points apiece in this round so uh it is uh 18 to 17 as we bring back the wheel this will be the next spin the bad guys so scully go ahead and read the question from the bad guys all right gentlemen your second question from the bad guys <laughs> What is step one of Wolf's plan to steal the Golden Dolphin? Your thoughts on gold and dolphins. I love gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dolphins are okay. Dolphins are smart. Five. They are. They're also vicious. One, three, two, one. Pens down. Tyler, we'll go to you. I said get Luggins' ID card. And Abel. Blend in. Blend in is the correct answer. So Abel will take the one point lead as we bring back the wheel. This will be for the third question. Oh, it's Cerveceros and I the Brewers game. <laughs> it is. It's going to be from uh, Lethal Weapon 3. All right, guys, your question in Lethal Weapon 3. When Riggs and Lorna find Hatchet and other criminals, Riggs is initially attacked and hit on the arm with what weapon? Good 
These movies are awesome. Thank yeah, you. my dad showed them to me when I was like 15 or 16, and they all just, I, I like them all, really. Yeah, I do too, honestly. But four, three, two, one. Pens down. We're going to go to Abel. This is not something that I wrote down. Uh, a wrench. And Tyler. I said an axe. Both incorrect. We were looking for a crowbar. Oh. A crowbar. It was something metal. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be the spin for the fourth question. Scully's favorite, Halloween 2007. <laughs> oh, I love you, but I hate you in the same breath. All right, gentlemen, your fourth question from Rob Zombie's Halloween. What is the name of Dr. Loomis's book about Michael? I actually knew this one off the top of my head, so. Nice! All that studying paid off back in the day, huh? I cried the whole time. I, I think we made you deep cut this at one point. I know that we put it on. You, did. you absolutely did. In the triple turn, you absolutely did. Yeah. Oh, that's totally what it was. Yeah, you're right. No. Five. Four. Granted, I, I, I put him on. I, know, I think Nick put one. him on there. Heads down. Uh, let's go to Tyler. So the Devil's Eyes, the story of Michael Myers. And Abel. Ooh, I said the Devil's Eyes, the Michael Myers story. The Devil's Eyes, the story of Michael Myers is correct. So two points for Tyler on that one. Um, I didn't have anything to do with that shit, said Nick. Uh, so Tyler goes back up one point. Nice back and forth here, Skelly, as we get to the last spin for the deep cut round. And bad guys once again. So, gentlemen, your fifth question from the bad guys. The bad guys are released from prison after how long for good behavior? Or is it jail, Scully? <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I was brought up recently on uh, a call that I was on with Nazario, and Nazario just goes, fuck you. <laughs> Five. I mean, we, we, we make it a point to only say that to Nazario. One. Pens down. We're going to start with Abel. Cool. I don't know. Three months. And Tyler. One year. One year is correct. So Tyler gains two more points. We end round uh, number four. Damn. So uh, close. It's 22 to 19. Is that what you have, Scully? Yes. Okay. I wanted to put just an extra point there for Tyler, but <laughs> you, you can. I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> All right. So 22 to 19. Uh, we're going to get into round number five. It's the final round, the betting round. Very exciting stuff. So we are going to say a category. The players are going to decide whether they want to bet zero, one, or two on the question. If they get the question right, they will gain those points. If they get the question wrong, they will lose those points. We will play until someone is mathematically eliminated or we have reached the end of the match. Gentlemen, any questions? Nope. No. Okay. Your first category that you will be able to bet points on will be DreamWorks Animation. Let's get bets starting with Abel. Two. And Tyler. Zero. Okay. Here's your question in the category of DreamWorks Animation. In How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, while charting new land, Hiccup plays fetch with Toothless. What does he throw for Toothless to retrieve? Speaking of, of pets, how's Bucky doing? Oh, he's magical. Such a good boy. Um, it's like, I don't hear him, so he must, he must be doing well. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm in the new basement, so he's far away. One, pens down. We're going to start with Tyler, who bet zero. His fake leg. And Abel. His fake leg. That is correct for two points for Abel. So it is a two-point game. Uh, 22 to – or no. What am I – am I drunk? 22 to 21, right? 22, 22 to 21. 21. Yeah, 22 to 21. So, um, so it is a one-point game. And the next category that you can bet points on is what? Uh, it's YA. Why A? Because why not? Let's get back. Starting with Tyler. Two. And Abel. Two. Okay. What is the question, Scully? 
All right, your question, gentlemen, in YA. In the Hunger Games Catching Fire, what is the only object that Hamish sends to Katniss via parachute throughout the games? Do you think he would do well in the Hunger Games? Um, I think I would be one of those that would hide first rather than, like, go straight into the fray. I would just walk out, be like, just fucking kill me, man. Like, I'm not gonna make it. Just, just, just take me. I'm a, I'm a free win here. Come on. I, 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 I aim for like, you know, you know, uh, four uh, repeat middle position, okay. but that is the third repeat for Abel. Yes, sir. All right, your question. What in the Hunger Games, catching fire? What is the only object that Hamish sends to Katniss via parachute throughout the games? Yeah, I, I, I would aim for like, you know third maybe fourth there's no like there's no like third place prize <laughs> yeah but like i don't want to be the guy who dies first i want to be the guy who like dies like close to being last yeah that's fair that's fair. that that that, 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 that there's a, a sense Four. of pride i take game. myself out so that way the story remains one repeat it again all right that's going to be obel's final repeat mm -hmm. all right in the hunger games catching fire what is the only object that Hamish sends to Katniss via parachute throughout the games? Yeah, I, I would not do well in any of these YA franchises. The Maze Runner, have you looked at me? Are you kidding me? I can't run. The Maze Runner, I think I'd be okay. The, the other two, I would probably just... Three. Two, one, pens down. We're going to start with Abel. I said soup. Okay, and Tyler? I believe it's called a spile to get water from trees. That, that is correct. correct. So Tyler hits that, goes up two points. Uh, it is now 24 to 19. So Five-point game. Again, so close. Uh, three questions remaining. The next category you can bet points on is Star Wars. All right, let's get bets starting with Abel. Uh, two. And Tyler. Two. All and right. I believe, I believe if both hit, that's it. If, if both hit or both miss, that'll be the game. If Tyler misses but Abel hits, we will move on. So your question in the category of Star Wars. What is the real name of the pit where the Sarlacc lives in Return of the Jedi? This movie slaps. I got to see I mean, this in theaters for the 40th anniversary um, mm -hmm. a few months ago. Did you go see it then? No, I didn't. I didn't because oh. it, it like it, it, it wasn't playing in, 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 anywhere near me. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it was so much fun. It was my it was, theater does Harry Potter and or the Rings, but it doesn't do Star Wars. Yeah, no, it was great. It was like a sold out theater. It was awesome. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We're gonna go to Abel. The Great Pit of Carcoon. And Tyler. I call it the Pit of Carcoon. And your winner and new fandom fights singles champion, Tyler Birch. Pit of Carcoon might be the Great Pit of Carcoon. I'm going to accept both, uh, but Nick could correct me on the graphic. I believe 3PO calls it the Great Pit of Carcoon. So, uh, yeah. yes. Pit of Carcoon was the answer that we had, and Tyler wins the match and is the new singles champion, 26 to 21. Scully, thoughts on the match? Yeah, I uh, this was a really, 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 really good match, really good back and forth. Uh, both players had some stumbles there in round one, um, some questions that I think both would, would like back. Um, but Tyler did a really good job staying in it in round two. He didn't take the lead but he stayed in it just enough to where he allowed the filmography round to sort of do the work for him. He swept, he swept filmography, used a good challenge to get his points. And then from then on, he just never really gave up that lead. I think the the last pull on the deep cut is what really sealed it. That that yeah, gave yeah. him that, um, that, that three point lead. And he, he sort of, he knew that if he played defense long enough in round five, eventually, with how Abel was sort of slipping up with with a couple things, he'd be fine. And look, even though he bet zero on that first question, he still hit. He still he still hit it. 
and then hit the other two to seal it. So great job by Tyler to sort of use the game to his advantage. Abel today, you know, he slipped up a couple times, but he'll be back. He's a strong competitor. He'll be, he'll be back in this position at some point, um, either this year or next year. Um, but, hey, congrats to Tyler because that is heck of a match to, to, to come from behind and win it. Um, he's the new champion and double belted champion, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's get into post-match interviews. We will start by talking to Abel and Jake Abel. Fantastic job in the match. You had the lead um, at a few different points in the match. I know it's probably not the performance that you wanted, um, but as your manager said, uh, I don't remember who was behind the scenes or on on uh, in front of the camera, but sometimes life, st- life takes precedence over trivia, and that's totally fair. But I still think if this is you on a day where you weren't studying as hard, you had some pulls in there that were insane that, like, I – I had no fucking clue what the answers were. I thought you played fantastic. Um, how are you feeling after the match uh, today? Thanks, buddy. Um, I feel fine. I'm actually really happy that I get to do other shit now, which I have been doing. But I was just I was stressed out about this match because I had zero time. I've had two days off since coming back from vacation. One of those was my birthday, so the other one was today. And uh, I watched six deep cut movies today. That it was just a mess. So my brain is mush. So I just wanna, I just wanna do other shit. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. Jake, thoughts on Abel's performance today? Yeah, like, Not like I, I believe it was behind the scenes where I was saying like, just life did not allow Abel to properly prepare for this match, and I think maybe there needs to be a a behind the scenes discussion about like being a little more lenient in terms of giving people like more space to live their life and trivia doesn't have don't have to be so hard and fast with the trivia deadlines but that's a discussion for another time um but i i want to get this out of the way before it comes in a more snarky version later like so we oh, were discussing former the 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 boundaries of like what the word former is now we actually know what it is because sadly now Abel is a former champion, yeah. but that does not mean that he will remain a former champion for very long. I mean, we got the team's tournament coming up and you have an Antonio have been killing it this year. Um, and I think this is just even more motivation uh, to go and run that tournament. And it's no disrespect to Tyler. He played, really well like exactly none of this to take away from tyler because he took a little while to get going but then once he picked up some steam he just fucking steamrolled me yeah it was it's those crazy. it was those championship was rounds that so he clearly good. like he clearly was more ready for and all props to him he put in the work he played great um he's a yeah, deserving he's champion he's really but... good and, and very handsome so good job ty ty, ty. love you buddy Avil, um, I think you were also uh, like like I said, you. I think you played great today. I know that you were kind of you're kind of giving yourself a little bit of a hard time, but again, despite the fact that you watched six deep cut movies today, you still played fantastic. And that I I I've been there when your brain is mush and you're trying to play trivia matches. It's insane, but I think that uh, you were awesome here today. You've been awesome all season. And like Jake mentioned, I can't wait to see what you and Antonio do in the team's tournament because that's disgusting, especially if Duel of the Fates wins tomorrow and they're at the other end of this and you guys make it to that. That is a match I would very much like to see. It's going to get messy. I, I can't wait to see that. So, guys, uh, congrats on a great match. I know it wasn't the outcome you wanted, but fantastic job nonetheless. And we'll see you guys next time as we bring in the new Fandom Fights singles champion, uh, Tyler. Holy shit, man. You did it. And uh, you've got to be just so excited right now. Um, like, there's there's not much things in this arena that are more exciting than actually winning. Uh, and you, you, you played fantastic to do it. I think that um, your opponent had some nice words and, and the way that he said that you started off a little bit slow, but once you got rolling, man, you were just on fire. Uh, it was awesome to watch, awesome to see, uh, and y- it's got to feel pretty good. <laughs> like, you got to feel pretty good right now, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, honestly, like, if I'm, like, I'm going to be honest with you, 
I kind of gave up on this happening. Um, being like, as much as I love Brittany and I love having her as my teammate, being next to someone like Brittany, who just constantly kills the game, you just kind of like, even though you're like, yeah, I'm going to go for that belt, a part of you kind of just is like, eh, it probably won't actually happen though. Like you're good, but I don't know if you're that good. Um, so like, it's, it's insane to be in this position to be the champion. I mean, I don't even, this is literally when I joined the community, I was just like, I'm pretty good at this. I'm going to get there. I'm going to do it. And, um, and especially to come off that game, because I mean, like everybody's been saying, like I, I started out so rough around one, uh, I was so anxious. My anxiety was skyrocketing. Like I could literally feel my hand shaking against my board for the first couple rounds. Like I was just so, so freaked out about being in this position and having to answer this level of questions. Um, and like a couple of them, I should have like, should have gone on, but I, I just didn't, didn't push it like I should have. Um, but, and it was just such a roller coaster. I mean, up, down, up, down, it was Abel, then it was me, then it was Abel again, then it was me. And then I was luckily able to keep it going. Um, but yeah, going against Abel, I mean, he played fantastic. Um, I know he's, we're, we're actually kind of on the, I don't know what's going on in his life, but, um, this past month has been crazy for me. I was working like 70 hours. I was trying to figure out how exactly am I going to be able to watch movies. Um, I mean, I was just like trying to make it work. You guys were able to accommodate me, which I really appreciated. Um, so it was just like, it felt like everything was going against me. And really the only reason why I feel like I'm here today is because of that guy right there and Brittany, they both were with me the entire time. Brittany helped me immeasurably. I can't even say how much she she helped me. She made cards for me. She watched the deep cut movies with me. She was there every step of the way. I would not have, I mean, I know I wasn't very confident coming into this, but I would have been lost if it hadn't been for her. Um, and just in general, I mean, she's always just helping me to become a better player. Um, so I, like these two, right, like they, I would not be, I would not be here today if it weren't for them. So I, I got to make sure that everybody understands that like, like Cody and Brittany are 100% being in my corner is why I'm here today. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, it doesn't even feel real, if I'm going to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> I was excited, and I was like, yeah, all right. And now I'm just, like, kind of like, did that happen? Like, did that happen, though? And so it's going to take a little bit for it to sink in, but I'm very excited, and uh, I'm really glad that I was able to to play such a game against Apple, get my revenge, get Brittany's revenge. Um, and uh, also, it's just fun to play with them, and now we can be friends again. <laughs> that's fair and uh this is yeah this is usually the moment when like you have that excitement you don't know what to do with it you go drink a beer you have a pizza and you, 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 you're relaxed maybe watch a non-fandom movie or a fandom movie you really like uh but uh tyler i would also like to add before i move over to cody that uh i believe if i'm not mistaken this is the first time that a team has ever consisted of two singles champions uh, with Duel of the Fates. This is the first time that uh, two singles champions have been on one team. So that's pretty exciting. You've added that to like a new type of uh, record almost uh, that you and Brittany have accomplished together as a team to be the, the team's champions. And then also each of you hold the singles belt. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, Cody, I do want to move over to you. Um, I think that uh abel had some or abel uh tyler had some really nice words to say about you right now um i know you when you bet <laughs> zero or uh, recommended betting zero on that first question thoughts when tyler that of course turns around the board and it's the correct answer and thoughts on the overall match man yeah i didn't kick myself on that one as much because we had a one point lead and i knew tyler is a player that could go four for four in that round if need be so we continue that one point lead if worst case scenario. But last time we went animation versus Abel in the first question or against Brittany. Brittany was able to, Brittany missed it. Abel hit it. It switched the game. If we would have just bet zero or one, we would have still been champion at the end of the day. Um, I've believed in Tyler from the get go. Uh, people from the outside scream that, oh, I just grabbed Brittany for Brittany. And Tyler was just saying, I, if anybody knows me, when I put Knights of Ren together for the first time, uh, when I put uh, Bounty Hunters Anonymous, I broke teams up and said, you're no longer partners with this person. You're no longer partners with this person. This is your new partner. This is your new partner. I have never once looked at Brittany and said, Tyler needs to go. Tyler is the person I believed in from the get-go. I told him this entire three weeks, four weeks, believe in himself. 
play for broke. Don't put David's situation, the match against David, where you couldn't catch up that one point, and he did it. Now, roles reversed. I'm I'm older. I'm not as dickish as I used to be, but this this whole since Brittany lost, it's funny how once the title drops, the excuses from Fun DMC rains like a fucking thunderstorm. Oh, work. Oh, situations. Oh, please give us this. Oh, please give us that. Tyler works at a fucking college in August where people are moving in and he is constantly having to, like, adjust his schedule. So let's stop it. Abel was the one to message at 2 a.m. Tell me, weak balls. Oh, can't get on call. Scared of my players coming for me just so I can keep beating them. Shut the fuck up. You lost. You lost and you own it. There's no excuses. There's no vacation. You're drinking with your shirtless sleeve and getting drunk. Fuck off. I don't care. Come to play next time or don't play. I'll say this to the entire community. If your life is too busy to do trivia, don't do it. You're clear. You are completely clear. No one signs a contract here. No one has to play. But Brittany had to defend the belt countless times this season and the the team's belt continually turning around. We never, at the end of that match against Abel, we never made one excuse about it. We never said, oh, she had too much going on. Oh, there's too much plays, this, this. Own your loss. Take your loss. Tyler kicked your ass today. The only reason you beat him in the first time is because he got quotes. And this is two matches, whatever film date, sorry to ruin anything. This is two matches now that Fun DMC rolls out quotes on the wheel. Be like, oh, look, you're two and one in it. Stop putting things on the wheel that you suck at. Because you suck just as much as we suck. So if you're scared of our players, deal with it. But Tyler and Brittany will be playing for the title again. I'm sick of the excuses, sick of the bullshit. You lost. Congratulations, Tyler. You kicked ass, and we're going to continue the team's belt run, too. So, And then Abel, when he loses the end, oh, I can do more fun things now. Well, go do them. Go. Stay off Messenger and stay off StreamYard. Bye. Uh, okay, well, uh, Tyler. Tomorrow yes. you are defending <laughs> your team's belt against um against uh, with Brittany, I'm sorry, against another team. Um, you're gonna be going up against Young Justice uh tomorrow. This is the second time you guys have played. Quick thoughts on that, and then we'll wrap it up. So uh I know we have names for these acts. Nick has the names for the acts. Um, this year is quickly shaping up to have a name of itself for me, and it's revenge. Um, revenge against Abel, revenge against Jack. Um, probably going to be revenge against Young Justice. Uh, Bernie and I, we've got we both really, it really bummed, it really irritated us that we lost uh, to Young Justice last te- last season. We were doing so well before that, and so things didn't go our way on that time. So we're going to be bringing the rain. And awesome. I would rather die than see Cameron Holtzman with a belt. So <laughs> that's fair. Uh, Tyler, we'll see you tomorrow in that teams match, and we'll see you uh, looking to defend your singles belt at the final act later this year. So, guys, congrats on the win. Scully, that was a lot. Any final thoughts? You're muted, my friend. <laughs> Just like Cody. Beautiful. We, I think we got the old Cody back. Uh, he. Yeah, you were he, talking about how nice he was at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It, 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 it took me showing my face again to, to bring out the old Cody, so that's fun. Um, but no, look, I think this overall, this was a great match. Both players definitely overcoming a lot of adversity within their own personal lives to, to be here today and to play as well as they did. So hats off to both of them. Uh, but Hey, look, Tyler, I mean, dude's a dog. He's a fucking dog. Uh, he played well, played hard, uh, used the game to his advantage and the game gave him a second belt. So Really interested to see how that dynamic works. Really excited to see how how they come off of that playing Young Justice. Uh, that's a team that I, I know very well. Holtzman and Javi, they're going to be very, very keen to get that team belt. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if uh, Tyler is still double belted by the time of his defense. Yeah, absolutely. So we will, uh, that'll do it for us today at Fandom Fights. Thank you to Abel and Jake. Thank you to Cody and Tyler. And thank you to Nick for writing the match. Thank you to Scully for co hosting. I have been Tim. We'll see you guys next time with another great Fandom Fights match, a title match tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>
part of the journey is the end. Goodbye, old friend. Kitty has to go.